This week's Word of the Week is going to be uh, drive rolls. Uh, word of the Week is kind of a series that I've been setting up where we go over common terms that are used in the, in the welding industry. What I've been working on is uh, a lot of parts that go to a MIG setup. And this is the final part that we're going to go over is the drive rolls. Drive rolls are in a machine, they feed the wire up to the gun. There's only two types of drive rolls. I got them right here, uh, non-knurled and knurled. What that means is regular MIG wire it, it uses non-knurled. It doesn't have little lines in it. The knurled are the little lines. They're basically indents that grip the wire to do uh, things like aluminum and flux core. Stuff that doesn't feed as well, so it, it grips it a little bit better. With regular MIG, you're going to have non-knurled. Uh, typical sizes are over here. Um, 023 and 030 kind of go hand in hand. The dry rolls have a label on them that will say what the size is. You have to have the right size dry roll, otherwise it won't feed right. Now the 023 and the 030, and that's in inches, that's just the diameter of the wire. It's really small wire. This is typically used in like a 110 machine, so 110 volts. Uh, garage welder maybe, good for welding thin stuff like exhaust, things like that, just hobby welding type of stuff. Um, Real thick stuff, this wire is not going to work well with. Uh, 023 and 030, you can use the same dry rolls. Uh, it's such a, a small difference in the, in the wire diameter uh, that it'll actually feed both. You might have to tighten it up a little bit more if you go to the 023, but for the most part, 023 and 030 are basically the same wire. Um, this is probably one of the most common, your 035. Your 035, 045, definitely the most common. Uh, 035, thinner stuff, again. But if you want to go into more productivity, you need more metal going down onto whatever you're welding, they typically go up to 045. Higher deposition rates, because it's a fatter wire. But what you have to do when you're switching these, is you have to make sure you're switching the dry rolls, otherwise it won't feed correctly. And down here, that 364 of an inch, that's a common one for uh, aluminum. So if you're MIG welding aluminum, you're commonly going to use 364 ths And uh, what I did is I just, uh, a little calculation over here. What is 364 is compared to 045? It's pretty close. It's uh, 046875 inches. So it's very, very close. Um, but all the dry rolls will say 364 on them. They won't say 045. Because technically that's an 047 if you're rounding up uh, wire. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what dry rolls are, the sizes, knurled versus non-knurled, um, problems that you can have with the dry rolls. There's two. Maybe there's more, I can only think of two, but um, over tightening and under tightening. That's what the problems are. Now, under tightening, the way you want to check your dry rolls, the dry rolls have a little screw on the top of them that you screw down, which makes it come down tighter. So, when you're tightening these, you don't want to over tighten and you don't want to under tighten. What you do is you pull the trigger on the MIG gun and you hold the wire. You want to just be able to stop the wire. A little bit with a pretty good force too. I mean you want it to go through your hand with some resistance but you want to be able to just stop the wire. That's perfect tightness for non-knurled. All right now if you under tighten what happens is if there's a kink in the line or if it's, if it's uh, twisted up it'll stop feeding and then it'll, you'll, you'll suck it back into your contact tip so you can't so you really don't want to have uh, under tightening because you'll end up ruining your contact tip and if you are ruining your contact tip and it's sucking back a lot you might want to check your drive roll pressure make sure it's not under tightened uh, over tightening uh, is probably the more common problem people just crank it down because they don't want to have it under tight so they just crank it down usually a lot of machines they'll have a, a guideline and it'll say steel aluminum flux core and then there'll be a little number and then you tighten the, the, the screw down and you go to wherever that metal is that you're using. Um, over tightening problems, common with flux core. When you're running flux core, if you over tighten it, it'll break the seam open and then the dust or the flux from the inside of the wire will fall out inside the liner and then you'll have feedability issues. Also, it will oval the wire. So then your, your wire is not round anymore, it's more of an oval and it won't feed right. And that's the same thing with aluminum. If you over tighten your aluminum, what it's going to do is make it oval and then it's not going to feed right. So those are the two problems. Um, like I said, when you're trying to figure out the tension with a regular midway, you just hold it. And you should just be able to stop it when you're pulling the trigger. You know, you don't want it to be able to um, stop if there's a little coil in the actual wire. So what we're going to do now is go out of the lab. We'll look at um, some knurled versus non-knurled, and we'll show you the different sizes on the actual drive rolls. 
And there's, um, uh, as far as the dry rolls go, they're usually about the same size and diameter. But if you have a push pull gun, and I'll show you a push pull gun as well, uh, they have little ones in the actual gun, as well as a spool gun. They have little dry rolls in the spool guns, and I'll show you those. So we'll go out in the lab and we'll take a look at some of these different kinds of dry rolls. Well, this is a typical dry roll setup for a push type system. And you can see the dry rolls are located right there in the front of the machine. There's a chart on the top that gives you dry roll kits that you can buy. This is a Miller 252, by the way. So let's go ahead and zoom in on there. All right. So these are the drive rolls right in here. This is the, the tightener. It's on a two and a half, I'd say right now, but this is how you tighten it or loosen it, depending on what you're looking to do. It's got a stainless wire in there right now. So uh, it's got uh, regular um, non-knurled drive rolls. Now to take this drive roll out, all you have to do is turn right here and that releases the drive roll. Sometimes it gets stuck, but so that pulls the drive roll out. So we'll zoom in on this drive roll so you can see what it looks like. One thing I forgot to mention up there in the classroom is sometimes these have to be uh, clean. So I guess that's another thing that can happen. But uh, you can see the side that was actually running. That's, old, that's an 035 side. Now if I turn this, it says 035. Now let's get it right side up here. It says 035 right there. That is on the opposite side. So that's how you read that. Now if you were to spin this, and then you can see now it says 030 right here. Now the 030, that's over here. It's on the opposite side of the way you read it because you're looking at it in the machine like this. So that's another little trick that can get you. As you can see, they're smooth. That's a non-neural drive roll. So let's go find a neuraled one to, uh, that we use for flux core here. Okay, this is an 045 neural drive roll that I just pulled out of a flux core machine. You can see it has 045 right there. It's kind of hard to read, so I have to stick it right in the camera. But if we turn this sideways, See how they're knurled? That's to push flux cord wire. It's got those little grooves. Helps drive it. I'll show you something cool here now that Miller does to store these. It's kind of nice. I don't think our Lincolns have that. Maybe they do now, the new ones. I'm not sure. But let me show you a little storage slot that Miller gives you. This is a really nice feature that's in a Miller 252. So let's say that you use this machine for flux core as well as um, stainless because that's what it's in it right now. But um, when you're done with the drive rolls, you can put them in that little slot so then they don't get lost. It's a real nice feature. You just leave them right there. Then you guys, if you switch them out, you just put them right in those little holsters and you're ready to go. So we're going to take a look at a uh, aluminum push-pull gun now before we head out so you can kind of see... Uh, some, some smaller drive rolls and the ones that are in the machine are about the same size as, as this one but we'll take a look at them both anyways this is an aluminum setup push pull gun and there's little tiny drive rolls in the gun let me zoom in on here they're about i don't know half an inch wide but the grooves for this are in that little wheel see it whoop got blurry let me back that out here i don't know if you can see that but that brass wheel or copper wheel right there see how it's got grooves on the side so the actual wheel on the other side has a smooth groove non knurled and then the entire wheel has uh, knurls on it to pull that thing through those are only like I don't know half an inch uh, diameter drive rolls and then we'll show you the ones that are actually in the machine. So that this is the pull part, and now we'll look at the push part. All right, this is a Lincoln uh, 350MP, which means multi-process. It's a fancy one. And this is the inside part of the push pull. And we just looked at the pull, and now we're looking at the push part. So let's zoom in there. Now these drive rolls are smooth because it's, the knurled one is up in the uh, the gun there that get that uh, wire out to the actual puddle this is a really good feeding system uh, you can tie that thing right in a knot and you won't have feedability issues so that is the push system and a push pull system 
That's all we got for this week. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Well, and we'll see you next week.